I'm not her daughter. She hates kids. I hate her and I hate you. Go away, said my 10-year-old cousin. Hey everyone, welcome back to Lives on Reddit. Don't forget to subscribe to be a for lifer. My little cousin is 10, I think, and is medium functioning autistic. My aunt and uncle normally take her to speech therapy two times a week and physical therapy three times per week. In the last month, COVID snaked its way through our family. Since I'm the youngest and healthiest and perfect as I recovered first. As an award, I was given the task of taking over taking my cousin to therapy, etc. While my aunt and uncle recovered from the fake news. Neither of us like to talk. Both of us like McDonald's and we're equally unsure about the other, so we've gotten along fairly well. Last Friday, there was some sort of holdup at check-in, which did not sit well with either of us. She started getting agitated, so I gave her my phone that has a Game Boy emulator on it so she could play Pokemon or not kill someone. She quieted down immediately, which the lady in front of us took note of. She turned around and said some nonsense about how sweet it was to see how clearly my daughter and I have a very close bond and understand each other well. Then she apparently noted my ringless fingers and said, Of course you're so close when it's only you two. Smile, grimace, frick you. Record scratch. Cousin doesn't miss a beat. Pauses the game, looks her dead in the eye, and says, I'm not her daughter. She hates kids. I hate her and I hate you. Go away. She resumes playing Pokemon and the extremely offended lady huffs and turns away. I bought her a 10 chicken McNugget meal and a milkshake on the way home. As I dropped her off, she said, thanks for the Pokemon. And that's the nicest thing she ever said to me. I don't want kids ever, 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 but being related to a 10-year-old sass master is quite beneficial. Truth comes from the mouth of babies. Also people with zero fricks to give. I'm so incompetent at dealing with children that I just avoid looking at them and speak only when spoken to. And when spoken to, I try to find a reason to leave the area immediately. I grew up with my same age and other side of the family low functioning autistic cousin. And as we got older, I'd be the only one he responded to. So maybe that's what helps her and I have a sort of cold war mutually assured destruction understanding because she totally knows I'm dying inside. Anyway, I hope the lunar and or Mars colonies get off the ground soon because I will be first in line. I don't like most kids, but those like her warm my cold black heart. She sounds delightfully snarky. She rarely speaks. It's normally when she's either about to start blowing steam out of her ears or my aunt is cajoling her into saying, bye cousin, me. Her middle name is my first name and she makes a point of asking to have her middle name change whenever I'm around. I'm so proud of her. Unfortunately, there's the other side of the coin, ear splitting tantrums, destructive behavior, the occasional peeing on the kitchen floor, etc. She punched a cat once, but that went over as well with the cat as you can imagine. Hi, you've been standing behind me, so I already know everything about you and your lives. Yeah, I'm talented like that. Look what else I can do. I can put my foot in my mouth. She was clearly a psychic since neither my cousin or I uttered a single word until she bit my thigh and said, for freak's sake, and gave her my phone. So many assumptions made in rapid succession that you're her parent, that you have a close bond, that if you were married, you'd have a wedding ring, that if you had a wedding ring, you'd be wearing it, that if you're not married, you must be single, that if you're single, you're also single parenting. It's so bizarre, like there's half a dozen ways one can be wrong here. And yet this lady forges ahead anyway with an incredible and frankly baffling amount of confidence. Yeah, people make all kinds of assumptions. And sometimes, mostly for my own amusement, I like to let them run crazy with that crap, let them think whatever the heck they want, and then watch their heads explode and their reality collapse into nothing when they instantly discover everything they believe is wrong because it's all just crap they made up in their head and has nothing to do with actual reality. This is kind of nice, to be honest. Kids give no fricks about social etiquette. At church, a kid came up to a middle-aged gentleman, rubbed the guy's belly, and asked if he was pregnant. Church hall erupted in laughter. During our Halloween costume contest thing in high school, I had a basketball hidden under my sweater. 
My school was K through 12, so all sorts of degenerates were running around, and one of the tinier miscreants punched me in the stomach. Her fist bounced back and hit her in the face. Regarding the fake news, amazing how sick, even dead, folks can get from catching what doesn't exist, eh? Must have something to do with the non-moon landing flat earth, I suppose. Regarding 10-year-old sass master, you know, sometimes kids really just say it like it is, and quite without hesitation. I remember many moons ago, a young kid, some relatively distant relative of mine, I was quite just a kid myself, anyway, was visiting my great-grandmother, of course, she was already quite old. This other kid, also one of her great-grandkids, sees and meets her for the very first time, takes one look and immediately bursts out, Great-grandmother, you're so old! I don't think the kid had ever seen anyone who looked so old before. Probably never even seen folks older than the kid's grandparents. And great-grandmother took it great. She just burst out laughing. So yep, great to not have kids. And yeah, kids, well, sometimes quite excellent when they happen to say it exactly as it is. I'm a high-functioning autistic. Maybe I'm closer to medium, I'm not exactly sure, with ADHD. I remember back in elementary school, I'd have to go to speech therapy and physical therapy. OT, PT. I loved it. Sensory gyms are great. Once I got to middle school, I only had speech therapy. I miss sensory gyms. I did OT too. The sensory gym was cool, I just hated the people that worked there. They talked to me in such a degrading way. You know how folks talk to us special people. Also was forced to listen to music therapy crap, and now I hate fluids because it triggers memory of that nonsense. Kids are refreshingly blunt. As an 11 year old child, I was a normie, but I do recall being in a supermarket with my mother, who had been a nasty pig towards me for days, I told her. Why do you keep putting things back on the shelves? You keep on frowning. You never smell in this place. We never have nice food in the kitchen. It's always brown and hippie crap. You get it for free from charities all the time. Are you and dad poor or something? I know, it's because you have kids. Aunt V doesn't have to worry about how much money she spends because she has no kids. And she can afford to buy me things that you won't give me. I am not having kids if it makes me poor and angry like you. You are fat and ugly. You told me you were fat and ugly because you had children. I'm not having children because I want to be rich and beautiful like on TV when I grow up. I'm going to have a boyfriend who I never have to fight with because we won't have children and we won't be poor. One, that story is amazing and your writing there was really fun to read. Two, is it okay if I ask you if you or someone in your family has lost their sense of taste or maybe never regained it? Thanks. One, love you. Two, only myself and my grandpa lost sense of taste and smell. Mine came back two days after I started feeling better. I had really bad body aches and fatigue, so by feeling better, I mean I was able to stand on my own. My grandpa is still not feeling well, but this evening he said he was able to taste a bit of a super spicy dish. In any case, regaining the senses unfortunately widely varies. It can be immediately or take months. If both smell and taste were lost, the regaining of the sense of smell may precede that of taste. The way you describe your dynamic with your cousin is amazing. Okay, here's my pitch. I'm imagining you two in a road trip movie where you have to travel across America and solve a big crime together or something, and along the way you get to know each other better. But instead of the cliche, and they love and understand each other at the end conclusion, you're still equally weary and hostile, but you just get better and better at having back and forth sassy banter. You catch the bad guys in the end and everyone's baffled at how you could work together well enough to succeed if you hate each other so much, you both just shrug. There's been no character development, no growth, or opening up, just more and more hilariously dry one-liners. Whoa, 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 whoa,